What if I told you that the oil recommended in your owner's manual could be the reason your engine dies early? Same car, same engine, same driver, but three different oils, 0W20, 5W30, and 5W40, led to completely different engine wear patterns. And here's the shocking part. The oil most manufacturers recommend did not win. In fact, one oil ran hotter, broke down faster, and showed higher wear metals, even though it's approved. Today, I'm not sharing opinions. I'm showing real engine data, oil analysis, temperature logs, wear results. And by the end of this video, you'll know exactly which oil protects your engine best and which one quietly sacrifices it for fuel economy. Stay until the end, because the winner surprised even experienced mechanics. Section 1. Why this test matters more than you think. Every oil debate eventually turns into noise. Thinner oil is better. No, thicker oil protects more. Just follow the manual. Here's the truth most drivers never hear. The owner's manual is optimized for regulations. It's designed to satisfy fuel economy testing emissions certification, fleet-wide MPG targets. It is not optimized for high heat, high mileage, long-term wear. That's why the same engines use 0W20 in the US, but 5W30 or 5W40 abroad, same metal, different priorities. So instead of arguing, we tested it. Section two, the engine and test setup, no tricks, no bias. To keep this fair, we removed every variable possible. We used a modern naturally aspirated four-cylinder engine, tight factory tolerances, direct injection, no tuning, no modifications. Same, driver driving style fuel oil filters, oil change intervals. Only one thing changed, oil viscosity, test phases. Phase one, 0W20 full synthetic. Phase 2, 5W30 full synthetic. Phase 3, 5W40 full synthetic. Each oil ran 7,500 miles. With used oil analysis, temperature monitoring internal inspection, no marketing claims, just data. Section 3, what actually changes when oil gets thicker? Before revealing results, you need to understand this. Oil viscosity is a trade-off, not a ranking. 0W20 ultra thin at operating temperature, reduces internal friction, improves fuel economy by 0 0.5 or some 1 mpg, but thinner oil film, smaller safety margin under heat. 5W30, balanced viscosity, stronger oil film at high temperature. Historically, the durability, sweet spot. 5W40, thickest at operating temp, highest shear stability, designed for heat, load, and stress. Each oil gives you something, each oil takes something away. The real question is, which trade-off actually protects the engine best in the real world? Section four, phase one, results. Zero W20, the manufacturer favorite. Let's start with what most people are using. Zero W20, what it did well. Fast cold start lubrication, lowest internal friction, best fuel economy, has 0.7 MPG. On paper, it looks perfect. But inside the engine, the story changed. What the data showed? Oil temperature ran 8 to 12 degrees inch hotter viscosity loss of 13% by 7,500 miles. Increased iron and aluminum wear metals, not catastrophic, but clearly higher wear. Internal inspection showed early oil darkening, light varnish buildup, thinner residual oil film after shutdown. Mechanic note, 0W20 works, but it works harder there's less room for error. Section five, the hidden problem with 0W20. Here's the issue nobody talks about. 0W20 has the smallest safety margin. That means more sensitive to heat, shears faster under load, breaks down quicker in real traffic, in stop and go driving, long highway runs, hot climates. The oil film weakens sooner. This doesn't kill engines fast. It kills them slowly and that's the most dangerous kind of damage. Section six, why this still matters before phase two. At this point, you might be thinking, okay, so ZOW20 isn't perfect, but manufacturers wouldn't recommend it if it were bad, right? That's where things get interesting because when we switched oils, nothing else changed. 
the engine behavior changed immediately, and in phase two, the wear numbers shocked us. We'll break down why oil temperature suddenly dropped, why wear metals fell by nearly half, and why mechanics quietly prefer this oil. Next, phase two, 5W30, the silent middle ground. Section seven, phase two, results, 5W30, the silent middle ground. Now we switch to 5W30, same engine, same driver, same route, same oil change interval, only the oil changed, and the difference showed up almost immediately. What changed? Average oil temperature dropped 609 degree rim. Viscosity loss was under 5%. Wear metals dropped 35, 40% across the board. That's not opinion, that's lab data. Internally, the engine told the same story. Bearings looked cleaner. Cam lobes retained a stronger oil film. Less varnish after shutdown fuel economy? Yes, it dropped, but only 0.3 MPG compared to 0W20. That's pennies per tank. Section eight, why mechanics quietly prefer 5W30. When we talk to longtime technicians, not YouTube personalities, but real shop veterans, the answer was consistent. One master tech put it simply, I don't chase the thinnest oil, I chase stability. 5W30 gave them better thermal control, better shear resistance, better long-term wear balance. It didn't try to win fuel economy tests. It tried to protect metal. That's why you'll often hear mechanics say, if you want an engine to last, don't go thinner than you need. Section nine, phase three, results 5W40, the heavyweight. Now we move to the oil many people assume is unbeatable, 5W40. On paper, it looks perfect. Thick oil film, high temperature stability, excellent resistance to shear, and under certain conditions, it delivered. What impressed us? Oil temperatures dropped another three for five degree grace trowies. Viscosity loss was almost non-existent, under 2%. Wear metals were extremely low, especially iron and copper. Ender long highway poles, high RPM operation, steep grades 5W40 was rock solid. But then we noticed something important. Section 10, where 5W40 starts working against you. Protection isn't just about thickness, it's about flow. Here's what showed up in the data. Slightly slower oil circulation, at cold start, higher pumping resistance during short trips, marginal increase in fuel dilution retention. In engines driven mostly, short distances, cold starts, light throttle. The extra viscosity didn't add protection, it added drag. One mechanic summed it up perfectly. 5W40 is amazing when the engine is working hard, but if your commute is 10 minutes, you're not using its strength. In other words, 5U40 is a specialist, not an all-rounder. Section 11, side-by-side -side comparison, real results. After identical use, Here's how the oil stacked up. 0W20, best fuel economy, highest wear metals, fastest viscosity breakdown, 5W30, near optimal oil temperature, lowest overall. Wear balance, best everyday protection, 5W40, best extreme heat stability, excellent wear control under load, overkill for light duty driving. And this is where the conclusion became impossible to ignore. Section 12, the clear winner and why it was unexpected. If this were a track car test, 5W40 might win an emissions test, 0W20 would win. But for real drivers, real traffic, real heat, real mileage, 5W30 delivered the best overall engine protection. Not the thinnest, not the thickest, the most balanced. That's why it surprised people. Section 13, why 5W30 won in the real world. Here's why 5W30 came out on top. Strong oil film without excessive drag, stable viscosity across wide temperatures, excellent wear control, minimal fuel economy penalty, cleaner internals over time. It protected better than 0W20. It flowed better than 5W40. It didn't try to game regulations. It tried to protect metal. Section 14, what manufacturers don't advertise. Here's a quiet truth. Many engines designed for 0W20 were originally validated with 5W30. The shift to thinner oil happened because of fuel economy mandates, emissions targets, regulatory pressure. 
not because engines stop needing protection. That's why the same engines use CW20 in the US, use 5W30 or 5W40 abroad, different rules, same engine. Section 15, so what oil should you use? Here's the practical breakdown, no hype, use ZOW20. If you live in cold climates, drive short trips, prioritize MPG change oil frequently, use 5W30 if you want maximum engine life, drive mixed city, highway, live in moderate to hot climates, plan to keep the car long term, use 5W40 if you tow or drive aggressively, live in extreme heat, have a turbocharged or high load engine. This isn't about right or wrong, it's about matching oil to reality. Section 16, the one mistake that ruins everything. Before you change oils, there's one mistake that destroys engines, even when the oil choice is correct, mixing driving habits with the wrong drain interval. Here's what happens. Drivers switch from 0B220 to 5W30. Good move, but they keep following the 10,000, 15,000 mile interval from the manual. Bad move. That interval exists too. Lower ownership cost on paper, improve emissions ratings, reduce dealer service visits during warranty. It is not optimized for engine longevity. Even the best oil fails when left too long. Rule mechanics follow. 0W20, 4,000 or 5,000 miles. 5W30, 5,000 thousands, even 500 miles. 5W40, $4,000, 6,000 miles, especially turbos. Section 17, how to switch oil safely, no damage, no myths. Let's kill a big fear right now. Myth, switching oil viscosity damages the engine. Truth, engines don't care about labels. They care about film strength and flow. Here's how to switch safely. Drain the old oil completely. Use a quality filter, OEM, Wix, Man, Mobile One. Fill with the new oil drive gently for the first 15 minutes. That's it, no flush. No additives, no nonsense. Modern engines are designed to tolerate multiple viscosities, which is why many manuals list alternatives in fine print. Section 18, what your engine will tell you. After switching drivers who move from ZOW20 to 5W30 often report, quieter cold starts, less ticking or rattle, lower oil consumption, smoother, idle, better throttle response. That's not placebo. That's stronger oil film and better damping. If your engine suddenly feels calmer, it's because metal parts are no longer fighting each other. The final verdict, after real testing, ZOW20, efficient but fragile, VW40, powerful but situational, 5W30, the best balance for real life. That's why it won. Not because it's exciting, because it works. Final takeaway, your engine doesn't care about marketing MPG stickers, dealer talking points. It cares about oil film heat control, stability over time. Choose oil for how you actually drive, not what looks good on paper. Now, I wanna hear from you. What oil are you running right now? And why did you choose it? Have you ever switched viscosity and noticed a difference? Drop it in the comments. Your answer might save someone else's engine.